Good Monday morning to you. Dan Wilcox here. It is March 25th, 2024. So I had grand designs on doing this as a live episode, but due to some technological challenges, meaning I got completely thrashed by technology, um, I'm doing this the classic way. So I'm going to record this video. We'll post it to YouTube. It'll be on the website as well. I want to tell you what I've already got done. This is a 12 by 24 canvas. Um, started, uh, it's a gray tinted canvas. This is uh, one of Bob's uh, sizes you can still get from bobross.com. To that, I've put on some just background uh, kind of stuff with an acrylic paint. So got some gray and got some black. I did these uh, kind of tree looking things in the ground cover just with a fan brush, just a, a cheapy old fan brush I got from uh, a pretty good size pack on Amazon. Uh, that way, if I let it dry and I had to toss it, I really didn't care. It wasn't one of my good brushes. Then I used a, just a natural sponge and put in some of that acrylic. Let that dry completely, and I have already put on the canvas a thin coat of the liquid clear oil. So the canvas is slick, ready to go. Uh, colors using today are got the clear oil. I already talked about the gessos, the, the acrylic paints that are dried on there, the trees and background effects, but titanium white. Midnight Black, Dark Sienna, Van Dyke Brown, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, and a little Bright Red, so we'll have it when we're ready to sign. I don't know that we'll be using Bright Red for anything else. Taking some inspiration from a couple of places for this one. Um, certainly, um, Bob had one similar to this, different size canvas, and of course it's going to be different every time, but uh, that's where the main idea came from. And if you want to check that out, that's Bob's uh, Season 29, Episode 7 of The Joy of Painting is the inspiration here. Also, my friend Tanya here in Ocala, who is also a Bob Ross certified instructor, does a spectacular wood scene on one of these 12 by 24s and checking out some of her uh, videos and uh, class info is where I wanted to start playing with these sizes. So uh, again, that's Bob show season 29, episode seven, and he called that Cypress Creek. And uh, we live here in the central part of Florida. So this is a pretty common watery swamp uh, we'll put in some big cypress trees. Yes, you actually do have palm trees in the woods. Uh, that happens quite a bit here in Florida. Palmetto bushes, all kinds of sharp things that'll pretty well ruin your day if you step, step on them the wrong way. So let's dive in. Let's have some fun. I like to use a one-inch brush um, to get started with color here. And just going to take some yellow ochre and... <laughs> I'm talking about my palette as if you can see it, and <laughs> had technology not put the absolute uh, smackdown on me this morning, I would have had a webcam that had just a shot of my palette, so you can see the colors and follow along there if you want to. And then this would not have been exactly the same camera angle, but uh, this is the cell phone or the camera on my cell phone, so it's the only way I've been able to make videos. Uh, I've got Lori's uh, Canon Rebel T6 over there with all the wires. So, oh, i just telling you, I got absolutely murdered. Barely got it to record, couldn't figure out sound. And then as soon as I started recording, it tells me my... Oh, it's not buffering, but it's a word like that about the resolution on the video. And anytime I would move, it, it would look like a strobe light effect. Oh, it was horrible. And it says, you may want to consider changing the size of encoding. Encoding, that's the word. But it doesn't tell you where to find that. Well, I don't know. So anyway, I will seek some, some help for that because I am absolutely getting thrashed by technology. So this is just some yellow ochre I've tapped into the brush. And we're just going just gonna to start building ourselves... Oh, a background sky here. Putting in some color behind some of these trees. One thing I did do was mix up some sap green and alizarin crimson. So I've got a beautiful transparent brown that I'll put some on here in just a second. 
but I won't be showing you mixing that because I've got this palette affixed to, oh, this shelving thing I use here next to my setup here in the studio. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what that is again when we get to using it. So just really getting some color in here. The liquid clear still lets me move some of that around. But instead of liquid white and it blending the colors, you really keep the value of your colors this way. I'll have it be a little lighter where the trees aren't so dense. But I do not want just one flat old dead color here in the middle. So I'm going to put this in pretty quickly and keep rolling right along. And I'm pretty excited. I've got a uh, class um, at a place I did a uh, demo at just a couple weeks ago. A place called Pebble Springs down kind of in the middle of the villages, but I don't believe it's actually on villages property. So officially not in the villages, but <laughs> by location it is absolutely. But I've made a wonderful new friend there. Her name's Deb. She is in charge of all the activities. Oh, maybe we just put our sunshine in there. Who knows? Maybe that's what that'll become. You just witnessed a happy accident, I think. So we'll just get some color down here, like I said. But uh, Deb was actually, she, like I said, she's the activities director there. And we'll have a good-sized class. I don't know if it's going to be about, oh, maybe 9 or 10, up to as many as about 14, I think, is where we set the cap for this first one, just so we can really... They've got some incredibly talented artists there. I'm really looking forward to painting with them. But uh, Deb used to work here in Ocala, and she worked with my buddy Tim. So she had a terrific friendship and working relationship with our friend Tim Smith. And if you've heard me talk about Tim before... Unfortunately, he was murdered by his spouse, and um, today's the one-year anniversary of that. So, purple was Tim's favorite color, but um, he saw just a lot of beauty in nature, and was. we only knew each other for, I guess, about uh, 13, 14 months, but man, what an impact on my life he had. He just... I know nobody's perfect and no relationships are perfect and obviously there was some some problems going on there that wound up culminating in his death but uh, oh, I miss my buddy Tim but thinking of the happy times and well uh, he's a big reason I'm still sober today so very supportive guy here in the Ocala community and uh, just wonderful. All right, I'm tapping into some of that brown that I made. I told you it was uh, alizarin crimson and some sap green uh, doing that. So it's a beautiful transparent kind of brown. And we can just put in... Uh, you always want your corners darker and anywhere light wouldn't be quite as strong coming through the foliage here so you can put in some some brown around the edges having some variation in color will also help that feeling of distance in your paintings so go for that let things happen like if you have a little accident like that where <laughs> you wind up with the sunshine there oh just smile work with it keep on going i didn't do that on purpose so we're just dancing in like i said some darker colors behind some of this foliage here this one is a surprisingly quick painting. A lot of these ones with the uh, gesso on them, they really are. It's that liquid clear, and you've really done so much of the background ahead of time. It really can kind of lend itself to helping things go pretty quickly for you. So if you're like me and like to paint, quickly and be done with it and move on, you would probably do well with uh, doing some of that background painting ahead of time. So now let's take a clean dry brush. That's the one I put liquid clear on with, so I just used a two inch brush. Um, 
I did, let me try to hold this reel still in front of the camera. I spray painted the uh, shiny collars on my brushes. I heard Bob say that he had done that in, uh, always mentioned that a couple of times, but I'm not a very good spray painter. I got over spray all kinds of places, but these are Bob's brushes. I mean, these are same brushes you'd order from my website or bobross.com or Jerry's Artorama, places like that. So just be careful. Um, I found some pretty cheap and nasty knockoffs on Amazon and eBay of Bob's products. So I love Bob's products. They're the paints I've used the whole time I've been painting, which this July will be four years. And I love his brushes too. So you can try whatever you want. You can try to save a nickel or two here or there, that's totally cool. You do what you want to do and find products that work for you. So now I'm just going to softly blend this together a little bit. I d again, I'm being cautious. I don't want to kill all my dark here, or excuse me, kill all my light, and just have one flat old dead color in the sky. So I'm being cautious to do that, but I just want to pull these colors together a little bit just so they are not obvious where one color stops and the next color starts. And I'm going to keep that lighter area kind of in the middle. So that's really the thought I'm having there. It's fine with me if some of this pulls around here and there. I like to go fast on some blending on paintings like this. Just, I'm going fast. I'm not pushing hard. Some places I'll push a little harder, like if I've got some some color somewhere I want some of it to move, then I'll give it a little harder pull and drag. But uh, for the most part, I go pretty quick and pretty smooth on blending. Now, liquid clear and paint thinner have a pretty violent uh, reaction. So I don't use much paint thinner when I've used liquid clear. I'll just have a paper towel handy. I've got a stack of them. These are just those select the sizes, kind of folded over and you can wipe out quite a bit of that paint, so don't worry too much about that. All right, so we are going to, I do have my notes. If you see me looking off camera, I've put my notes over here on, on what would have been my uh, secondary monitor mounted next to my laptop, so I've got screens everywhere. Right now they're holding my handwritten notes. <laughs> oh, technology, God love it when it works, but boy. Oh, my butt is tender from taking beating after beating after beating from this stupid technology that makes it so much harder than what I want to do. All right, so now I have mixed up a dark green as well. Uh, we are just going to put in some color on this tree. Believe it or not, it is in what will feel like the foreground for a few minutes. And... Um, there's not a lot more color we're going to put back in the back. You know what I do want to do, which I almost forgot? I want to sneak a little bit of white um, here in the middle just because I've got that kind of bright sunshine there. So I'm not going to put much of this because this titanium white is an opaque color, which means you can't see through it. Aren't you impressed? My fancy art terms. So let's just put in a little bit of white. Put in a little bit more, so maybe we've got some uh, some kind of streaky white coming through here and there, and we'll, uh, you know, maybe we'll have uh, we'll have a lot of that covered up. So I'm not going to do a whole bunch of sun rays on this one, but those will look cool if some of them stay visible. That might be kind of fun to see. So. I'm not too worried about those. I know most of that will be covered up. Can you even see those on camera? Oh, you can see it a little bit. So let's just soften some of that down. I kind of just want to help this feel a little bit misty, as it so often does in Florida. So maybe we don't know what time of day we've got here. But we've just kind of got some mistiness. Don't need much. Don't need much. Start with very little. Blend it outward from your lightest area. If you go back in there, I'm running the risk of polluting all of that and losing it all. And that's okay, because I could put it right back in. 
once I get this YouTube Live figured out and am broadcasting live, I'm going to be holding a regular kind of schedule. I'm thinking about doing that twice a week, Monday and Wednesday. I want to do one morning and one afternoon or evening. And for this show that I have affectionately called Progress Not Perfection, I want to use Wednesday as something cool like work in Wednesday or put in the work Wednesday, meaning a thing to practice. So, oh, one day we'll do just trees, a whole canvas of nothing but trees, lots of different kinds of trees. Um, we'll do, um, oh, just a whole scene of mountains. We'll do, we'll, I'll, we'll use some big 18 by 24s and maybe section them off with some tape and we'll do a few different skies different types of clouds. Um, there's really great ways to practice. And you don't always have to fill up a whole canvas. You could use, oh, an acrylic palette if you've got one. I've got just some rectangles of acrylic I ordered off of Amazon. They're clear. You could use that if you get um, weekly or damn near daily deliveries from Amazon Prime like we do here at our house, you wind up with some really good cardboard and lots of it. So whatever you don't put out in the recycle bin, cut the flaps off, or if there's a good shape you like, keep it. You could get one color out, one brush. You could practice with just, say, one of the fan brushes and just paint trees. You don't have to do a whole painting. Don't worry about that. But if you'll just practice the hand motions, you know, my recommendation when I'm teaching class is to start with what Bob recommends and then adjust it to fit your hand. He's not, he's never claimed to tell us he was showing us the only way to do things. He's showing us the way he's found to make it work best for him. That does not mean we have to do it the same way. Right, off my soapbox, let's keep on painting. So I've got a nice dark kind of, well, by itself it's kind of an ugly green mixed up on my palette here that was... Um, some midnight black, some sap green, some cadmium yellow, and yellow ochre. Oftentimes I would just mix that on the brush, but I just want to start with the color as it is and kind of see what I'm getting. So I'm just going to use the corner of the brush. And to me, these are the closest leaves to us in this part of the painting. And on this side, obviously, of where all of that bright light is coming from, so I may just cut over here and grab a little bit more straight sap green onto my brush just to vary that color a bit. So you can play with this however you want. You can certainly mix on the brush. You can mix on your palette. The thing to do is just think of one cluster of, of leafy things at a time. Don't just hit these in at random. But don't get all twisted up in the thought of it either. Just, just, you know, I see people struggle in class sometimes because they'll do this and then they'll come over here and then they'll just chop something in like that. Well, you're going to look like you've just chopped it in haphazardly. If you'll take just a second, use just the corner of the brush, just get it to bend down for you, and just think about one individual group of these at a time, look how much better that looks. Instead of this hacked in, straight line, weirdo looking thing, you get some beautiful things. Reload paint often. Change the angle of your hand, change the position of your hand, and leave a bunch of your dark. Leave a bunch of that. That'll just look so beautiful. As you go, I'm going to try and just sort of be gentle around some of these light rays zinging through, so it'll just continue with looking like it's coming through the tree now. And all we did was really paint in the correct order, the light first, and then, then kept coming this way. So, at any rate, I'm going to make this a really long video if I keep talking so much instead of painting quick like I told you I was going to. And have some stuff come from off of the uh, canvas, it, just because... Our canvas ends here doesn't mean our swamp does or our, ah, oh, excuse me. It does not mean the woods ends there. I do want to put a little bit of uh, 
color out on this island before we get too far past it. So I'm just going to dance in a little bit, not a lot. Again, just subtle, just a little out here. Don't want to see too much of that, but it just helps push everything behind it back a little bit. I'm going to pick up some yellow. I'm right into some yellow ochre just to really lighten this green color down out so I can kind of make, oh, some different bushy shaped things. And if that's a little too yellow, then I'll just grab a little green, change my flavor, and just want to... We can also change this to how we often do bushes in Bob's methodology, pulling that brush one direction. So I've got, I pulled it towards the bent edge and I didn't do a very good job spray painting that, but you can see that's the bent side of the the fairing there, the metal band. This is the smooth side, so this side's crimped. I've always pulled the crimped side towards me. See, can you see that it kind of curves that edge? So I was pulling this crimped side towards me, flat on the palette, and I'm just going to hold that up towards the top. So I'm just going to push in. Let's see, where would you be able to see that a little better? There we go. We'll just get in some cool bushy shaped things. Again, think about one part of your little foliage at a time. And we can change that however we want as we go. This will wind up in the middle. This is going to have some big cypress trees in it here in just a second. I just want to put in some greener, still with a yellow idea. And we're going to have some cool stuff down here. So we're just going to keep right on rolling. I like this dark area here, so I just want to put in a few little things. I'm going to leave that dark area there. Don't want to kill it all. Not, not at all. I want the separation, so it, it's going to help us start building the distance. Let's see how we're doing on the old uh, screen there. Looking okay. All right, what else are we going to do here? Let's just put in a little bit of kind of grass. I don't want to lose that against the yellow background there, so we'll just let that stay. Okay. And we're going to make that reflection. We'll do something with that at the end. So I forgot to grab myself a filbert brush, so I'll be right back. Thankfully, there's never... It's not too far away to go find yourself a filbert brush. This does not have the... I forgot to spray paint a filbert brush. So you can see if that glint of light is what is so distracting as you paint, both to you and to me, under the bright lights of this Hollywood studio I find myself in. So... And by Hollywood, I mean <laughs> Northeast Ocala. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, I'm going to put some masking tape on that real quick. I'll get us one spray painted before I get all this technology sorted out. This is my speed of... Oh, again, technology wonderful when it works, but oh, what a waste of time when it doesn't. Bunch of busyness doing nothing. Anyhow, so we're going to do some... I really like having like two big cypress trees over here and maybe some knees popping up. We may put in another cypress over there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just see what happens. So I'm going to grab some Van Dyke Brown, some dark sienna, just a lot of paint, a lot of paint, a lot of paint. And now you can really make your cypress trees as big as you want. So I've got just some Van Dyke Brown, dark sienna mixed on the brush. Doesn't really matter. And this, I just like to just pull it in. You don't have to push hard. And you can even turn your brush as you go. And if you got a little bounce and shake in your hand from too much coffee this morning, you're going to have a beautiful cypress tree. Reload. Kind of build it in. We want a thick layer of paint here. So when we put some highlights on it with some white here in a second, it really catches it. So don't push hard. Don't come back. I mean, it does, it's okay if you do. Don't feel like you're going to mess up your tree but you can just lay it on thick. Lay it on thick. This is just, just the dark so our light will show. 
you know, I've had the opportunity to uh, meet some new friends and kind of be, hopefully, as time goes, not really, I don't know, mentor's not the right word, big brother, I'm older, so I could be the cool uncle, big brother, friend, whatever the, the right analogy is, but um, that have struggled with some of the same things I have, um, and, you know, I have found nothing that helps me stay sober and keep the thought of, well, thankfully drinking does not come to mind at all. I was hurting so bad in the hospital those eight days just over six years ago that thankfully I just, that's just not something I've been struggling with is the, the constant thought of drinking, which so many people do have struggles with. Um, but even, not even any interest in in smoking weed, which I certainly loved for a long time, but um, in spending time with and just talking with, sharing experience with some of these new friends I'm talking about, you know, it just, talking to them and trying to be a, a, a good listening ear and sharing some of my experiences, f helping them just helps me not want to drink or smoke and or use legal mar marijuana here in Florida in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, the simplicity there is ridiculous. Well, help somebody else and you wind up helping yourself more. Well, what a true statement. We're just going to have kind of a mess of cypressy kind of things there. So, at any rate, the point of that is just help somebody, you know. All right, let's do another tree since I got so much brown and dark sienna on here, another big one. Then we're going to put some highlights on those trees and um, uh, some branches on them and some leaves on them. And I'm going to make this one a big one. If you've ever seen cypress trees here in Florida, they grow in all kinds of crazy ways and pretty pretty harsh environments standing out in the hot summer or hot Florida sun so much so they are quite hardy and they thrive in water and their root system will grow these things called knees I don't know tons about it but it's just really incredible. These are roots that grow up and they actually can start being kind of the next tree thing happening. You get all these little crazy knobs and little, they get eroded by the water they're growing in and oh, they just grow every which way, kind of, but look like little, which one's coming up from the bottom of a cave? Stalagmites, tights, I don't know. Growing straight up like that, though. But again, dark, dark, dark. Thick, thick, thick paint up here in the tall part of the tree. Boy, I just love that. These brushes just make things happen. Just go with it. Just go with it. Don't, don't try to figure it all out. You don't have to. Maybe this one's got a little friend that's growing from someplace behind it that we can't see. So we'll just have that kind of come down and stop right there behind it. And we'll separate those with highlights here in just a sec. Don't you worry about that. All right, well, I'm going to push out some of that brown. I'm just going to go over and grab some white. I don't want it to be straight white, so it's fine that it's gra I've still got brown in my brush. Now watch how simple this is. So this right side of the tree, to me, would be lighter, just because that's where the light appears to be coming from, so just barely. Barely touch. Let the canvas just grab on that thicker part of the paint what it wants and keep pulling down just barely. Barely, barely touch. Barely touch. You get it a little thick, too thick in some places, that's all right. We'll come back and soften anywhere like that. But you can just touch. Sometimes these cypress trees are kind of gray all over, so maybe we just make these little fellas a little grayer 
by just, just kissing it in. And see my colors mixing on the brush. I want some variation on these things. And we're going to seat them together and put some stuff around them. So if they look a little weird to you right now, that's okay. Here in the kind of the more swampier area down here at the bottom, I don't think there'd be as much light. So I just want some color on them. See how that just adds a layer? And there is nothing magical or artistic about that. Just very light pressure. No pressure whatsoever. You got to let the canvas take what it wants from you and use the tool correctly. That is the best advice I can give you. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Just work with it. Come down here and I'll show you what I meant by separating these two trees with the highlights. So the one that's in front, demonstrably pull past it. And look at that. Now you can tell that other tree is behind it. Nothing to it. Just to barely touch. You see that I have not reloaded with white. Don't need it. Let all these variations happen for you. Let it all happen. Down here in this darker bottom part of the tree. Whoo. Boy, there would be some creatures down there, wouldn't there? Whoo. Lizards and snakes and alligators and spiders and probably a turtle by the time we get some water in there. So I'm just going to, I just knocked out the extra paint. I just want to just, just soften, just soften a little how stark some of that white is. I just want it to be grayer, look a little more weathered. So I am barely touching, barely touching. If you touch too hard, it's going to all go away. We don't want that. We don't want it to go away. We want it to stay, stay and play. There we go. See how it's just looking like old wood? I hope you can see that on the camera. I really do. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, we got to go up and uh, visit mom in northwest Florida for a couple of days. And our youngest had spent spring break up there. Oh, he had a blast. He and grandma always have a great time together. And my brother and his family live up there, and what a treat to get to see the five of them and uh, mom, the three three of us. G was already back at school. Hmm. Actually, his spring break was the same time, so he was still here, and then headed back to Virginia. But uh, so almost all of us were there. But great, great fun. Now I am going to take my script liner brush and step just off camera for a second and grab some paint thinner and put it down in some of our brown just so I can do some branches. Now when I use paint thinner, I told you before, paint thinner and liquid clear have a violent reaction when they touch each other. You can avoid that if you'll mix your paint thinner into whatever color you're going to use very, very well. I'll certainly eliminate 99.4% chance of issues. So I'm just going to make a very thin brown, and I am just going to put in what I think some branches might look like coming off of our cypress tree here. I want that to come to a sharp, sharp point. And cypress branches, just like the cypress tree, grow all kinds of ways. So there might be one going that way and some coming this way. A lot of them will be broken off just because life is tough. Oh, maybe we'll do some Spanish moss. I'll try to remember to do some Spanish moss on some of these. Boy, do we have lots of that here. It is a parasite and winds up killing the tree, but... Uh, Boy, is it cool looking while it's here and can really make some things beautiful. Now we'll put some, uh, like I said, leaves and uh, foliage on these. And if we cover up some of these branches, that's okay. We can put them back in. Now this, this, this fellow looks like he's maybe had some better days, doesn't he? So he may not uh, have too many still thriving branches. So we'll just give him a few. And this big fellow that's uh, here in front, well, let's just make make it make it known he's in front. So we'll put his branches out pretty good. 
thin paint, thin, thin paint. If you need to go back and get some more paint thinner, do it. Nothing wrong with that. I do need some, excuse me, be right back. There we go. Stir it up real good. Oh, and we'll put in, like I said, we're gonna put in some, and have these branches go every which way. That's what they'd be doing in the forest. So don't, don't just have the left ones go to the left and the right ones go to the right. How boring is that? So have some that come across your tree and you can't tell where they go and just have some dead branches sticking out here. Have a little shake in your hand. Hold your fan, hold your brush with some down angle in it and let gravity pull that paint out because the paint's real thin and the hairs are real long. And so that works out pretty good. All right. You know what we're going to do before we get too much further away? Let's take that little brush we had some titanium white on it and just sneak in a little bit of um, reflection. I want to have just a little reflection in our water, and it does not take much lit or titanium white to do it. And remember, titanium white is opaque. So it is not something you can see through. And in this liquid clear, we don't want to uh, lose everything. Well, to me, the brightest area would be like right here. So we're just going to pull in some reflection. Don't need much color here. Don't need much white, certainly. Wouldn't have a whole lot of light over here, So, but we would have some reflection that we want to keep. A little more white right there. Good, good, good. Let's soften that ever so much. So again, just wiping out the extra paint there. Just barely soften it, barely pulling down, no pressure here. If you'll do this softly, then you can do it a couple times if you need to. And then how do you finish the reflection? You go across, just go across horizontally. It's the same whether you've used liquid white or liquid clear. Gentle, 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 gentle touch, gentle touch. Gentle, gentle, gentle. We're going to put some shore around that. We'll put some other bushy things down here and help that look even more watery here as we, as we go. But we needed to sneak that in there now, or we might have missed it. And I'm glad I had it in my notes, because I had forgotten that that was going to go right there. All right. So we've got our cypresses in... We've done some limbs. You know what I wanted to put in here? Let's put in a few sticks and twiggy things kind of growing. Oh, just coming in out of the, the side here. Maybe we've got some, a few little branch things that are sprouting out of this one. And I don't even know if cypress trees do that, but they do in my painting. So if you are the master horticulturalist and I've done that wrong, okay. You do it different on yours. This canvas, this is my world. So I get to decide how different things happen and what's going on in my world. Isn't that the beautiful thing of painting? You get to do how it makes sense to you and I get to do how it makes sense to me. And they don't have to be the same. I love that. I'd love to see what you're doing, too. So if you've worked on this, a terrific lady who's taken some classes with me. I think, I think she's taken two of my classes, and then we found out that we go to the same uh, church family here in Ocala. And so she's come to our small group a couple of times as it's worked for her schedule. Her husband got to come with her, and she actually emailed me a painting she did that is a request. I actually think a friend of hers commissioned her to do it, and it is spectacular. She can paint landscapes paintings, and then she put a lady riding on a horse down this beach. Whew. You want to talk about next level cool? Mm, I'm telling you, I love it because I don't know how to paint people or animals. I like to paint landscapes, and so that's what I do. And um, yeah, working out okay for me. And I love seeing what she paints. So let's do this. Let's put in... <clears throat> oh, let's put in some leafy things. So let's take our brush we were doing our dark colors with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gracious sakes. 
And these, these colors can, can be different as well. So we'll just take our uh, green color we mixed up and let's just see if we like it for our uh, cypress trees. So let's just kind of put in, again, just use the corner and just touch here and there. Cypress trees are a little goofy looking. I mean, they, they can have leaves do all sorts of things. There'll be different colors on different parts of the tree. I almost forgot I said I was going to do some uh, Spanish moss, so thank you for reminding me. I'll get some of that in just a second. But let's just put in some green here. Yeah, that's working for me. Let's take one of our little fan brushes and take just a little, just a little, midnight black and some white. I'm going to put in some liquid clear just so it thins it out and this will pull real easy. I just want to make a little gray because most of the time Spanish moss looks gray. It'll stand out nicely in our picture here if we get a nice little gray color. So midnight black. I'm going to add a little brown just to dull that down a bit. I got a little too purpley. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. You don't have to be a color expert to do this. Just play with it. You'll see what happens. It gets all, all mixed weird on your brush and looking funny and, and go for it. Just and, and Spanish moss hangs basically straight out of trees and it's all different shapes. So you cannot do this wrong and it will fall out from everywhere. In a forest like this, it would be down here on the ground level from falling out of the tree. Birds would pick it up and drop it. So we'll have some that's a little lower, a little further down this tree. And oh, maybe that's what's pulling this, this poor branch down like that. Who knows? Who knows? So, so maybe there'd be some down here and we'll put, we'll put a little thicket of it there. And oh, who knows? Who knows? It's just exciting. Oh, let's put some right there. And see, I want this paint to be thinner so it'll stick to that already thinned out paint that I put on with the script liner brush. See how it's just a game back and forth, back and forth, dark and light, thick paint first most of the time in every way, and then you add the thinner paint, and oh, it'll just work beautifully for you. And you don't have to overdo this. You just have the idea of some Spanish moss here and there, and there and here, and oh my goodness, it will just look like it's everywhere, but it just will fit so beautifully in your painting because you've just given the viewer's eye the suggestion. You don't have to tell them the whole story. You just got to give them the idea. Just give them a little, little thought here and there. Let's see how we're doing on... Can you see that? Kind of glary looking back there, but I think you're getting the idea. You're getting the idea. What time is it? How can I tell what time it is? Hmm. I do have to pay attention because I have to go deliver a painting that um, I'm actually getting to donate to a, uh, they do a fundraiser at one of the RV resorts that I have taught classes at this season. By season, it's the snowbird season here. Just about to wrap up with it being Easter on uh, this coming Sunday. Well, I hope you were in a great church service yesterday for Palm Sunday. That was just magnificent at Meadowbrook yesterday. Boy, the worship team is so gifted. The songs and oh, the message from Pastor Tim. He is just such a gifted, brilliant man. What a what a treat to be in the audience when he speaks. The other pastor teams are amazing as well. Sean did a great job last week. Oh, we are indeed fortunate folks here in this part of Ocala or part of Central Florida and get the internet and need a source for things like that, I'd certainly encourage you to check out the Meadowbrook offerings because my goodness, whoa, it's just good stuff. will certainly improve your life if you let it. So we'll just put in a few leaves. Don't want to kill all that uh, that other stuff we did on our that that furthest back tree, which doesn't look so close to us now, does it? 
So we're just going to put in, I kind of like it when some branches do that out of big old trees like that. So we'll just put in, kind of cover up some of our uh, Spanish moss tops just so they, like that one I like. I like the way that one's just hanging in the tree there. But I want to make us a little lighter. So we've got a little, little light playing through this tree in different parts. So we'll just put on a few little things like that. There we go. There we go. Boy, this is a fun day to paint. Isn't it great? I hope it's beautiful and lovely where you're at. Yeah, that's doing okay. So let's see. We've done the Spanish moss. Let's put in some some grassy things. You know what I want to do that with? I am going to do that with a small uh, fan brush here. I just want to put in some kind of swampy, swampy looking things down here. So I'm going to take some of this sap green I've been working with, and I'm just going to just straight with that. I got that brown and liquid clear and uh, the gray from the Spanish moss on my fan brush. So I just want to see what happens with it, see if it's a color I'm, I'm okay with. Just to put in some, oh, just super looking wet, grassy, mossy, bushy looking things down here at the foots of some of our trees, just to bring a layer closer to us, coming right down on top of some of our reflection that we put in. We could pull some of that down if we want. Just be careful, don't do much of this. Just pulling some down, just here and there, here and here. And add a little yellow to that, brighten it up a little bit, lighten the green. A little different color over here. Start with what's furthest away. And then just keep it coming forward. Ooh, I like that green. That's pretty. Maybe this comes out like a little point of land at the foots of this little cypress tree. Vary the pressure in your hand here, though, and leave some of that dark. Otherwise, you just wind up making smiley faces. Well, if you want smiley faces, fine. <laughs> totally cool. I ain't telling you it's wrong. Just, just be ready for that. So... We'll sneak a little of this. Again, just varying the color a little bit. See how, see how that just changes the whole feel of that? Still keep some depth. Let's kind of get some more. And just push a little deeper. Let a little, little more of that bend if you want that to feel closer to you down here. So we're going to bring out a little more swampy grass. Maybe we'll pull a little of that down. I am going to put some, some dirt right at the edge of these. Uh, these things here. This this has got to be one of my favorite spray paint successes, I would say. Flat black or matte black, I don't know what spray paint's called, but uh, onto the palette knives. They still are bright, but man, I'm telling you, that thing is, is black, not silver now. So here's a silver one I can hold up next to it. I was just using that to mix paint on my palette. Boy, you can see, whoops, you can see this one is still silver and shiny and the light going crazy. So anyway, I'm kind of proud of myself for that. I don't often have success with uh, doing things like that. So I'm just going to grab a little brown. Oh, and just here and there. And just here and there. Just going to scrub in gently, gently. You don't have to do this hard. It doesn't like scrubbing in a water line. Not yet. And we'll just kind of maybe pull a little dirt up, up the slope a little bit there. Oh, maybe that just joins. That, that got a little... I forgot there was some uh, paint thinner right there, so that's way thinner than I wanted it to be. So let's reset. Don't need so much paint. No, start with less. Oh, and let's just scrub in a little here and see how we're doing. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to use the little edge of the knife. I love the little edge of the knife for smaller areas. And maybe we'll just pull in a little dirt back here. Don't have to do a lot. Just giving it the idea. We wouldn't be able to see it all, especially as it tucked in some of these little nooks and crevices and crazy little places where an alligator might go lay. Well, if that one got away from us, let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. Let's not fight it. We're just kind of 
turn it into an area, part of the swamp you probably would not want to step on because you go straight through it. Let's get a little, little lighter color and we'll just kind of put a little, little highlight just to soften that down, make it not quite so aggressively brown here in our swamp. Yeah, I like that. A little highlight over here on some dirty areas. Not much, not much. Don't overdo. Don't kill it. Don't kill all the dark back there. Cool. You can even take just a whisper of titanium white. If you need to scratch in a waterline just to give it a little brighter edge there. And this is just like using liquid white, except I've used titanium white. A couple reasons. I don't have any tight liquid white out on my palette or easily accessible. But you need so little of this. Titanium white really does work well. Using that firm, firm, opaque paint there. Cool. Let's uh, pull across just a little bit of that reflection that we can still see under our land. Just being careful not to hit the the brown above it. Super, super gentle. Don't have to do much there. Don't have to do much. You know, maybe, 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 maybe. And what time is it? Well, we're, we're not quite an hour, and I'm I'm okay with with things going about an hour on these videos. I hope that's okay with you. I think maybe we'll have one more little uh, land area here and a couple of bushy things and we'll call this one done. So let's just take some brown, some dark sienna, and I mean we could put this in. does not matter. We just need something dark. So we got something to put a bush or a tree kind of thing on here. So this is really, I mean, I could have done this with any brush on the palette or on my workbench here. Just need the dark. Don't need tons of color there, too. I just want it to be dark. Kind of give it some size and dimension, and it just runs off right there. Scrape off the extra. Cool. Put that knife away. What are we going to put down there? How about some dark... Oh, some dark, bushy kind of things. We'll put some cool leaves on them. So I'm going to grab some dark. Remember how I loaded that brush? Pull in one direction towards the crimp side. I did that, and I just want some dark. So we're just going to have some dark. This dark is just going to be here to hold up our light. So you may not be able to see all of that. I probably could have done this right over. Didn't need that brown on there first, but I still wanted it on there just to show you. You can do that with a knife. You can do that any way you want to. But now that's that's some thick paint on that bottom corner. Let's see. Let's uh, come just this way. Now that I'm at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see. There we go. Is that a little more better? Cool. And what color shall we use? Oh, let's do something beautiful and green. I'm going to use that same brush, just taking out some of that dirty color. You can see how much came, came out of my uh, paper towel there. So I'm going to pick up a little liquid clear. Oh, let's, let's pull in some cad yellow. This will really make us a nice, well, muted yellow, greenish kind of color. I'm going to let it be all streaky. So this will look all different. So I got quite a bit of paint on there. That curved edge, I pulled it towards me this way, and now I'm just keeping that curved edge up towards the sky. I really do want to get that uh, uh, camera situation straightened out so I can show you how to load or how I'm loading these brushes when I'm telling you these things. I just think that'll be really helpful. And just like our tree branches, do this one little grassy cluster or one little bushy thing at a time. Otherwise, you wind up just chopping in kind of a turkey-looking kind of little thing. And, and that can be okay. I mean, if it's Thanksgiving or you like turkeys or whatever that might be, um, that's fine. But give it a little personality. Give it a little more shape. Now I want to make some kind of grassy-looking things here at its foot. Just something growing behind it. This is where I've got to be careful not to just smash in the same repetitive shape, get those smiley faces, 
on the from the fan brush. So not much pressure. I'm just pushing deeper, and I am leaving those dark areas in there on purpose. Just pushing a little further in, so a little more of that color comes off there where I want it to be closer. So you know what? I think we're going to sign this one, call it done. Um, let's see, 55 minutes right now. So I am going to be looking for a friend that knows how to get me set up on these doggone cameras and buffer, or not buffering, what was that called? Encoding speed and still clear video. Right now the cell phone's working awfully well, so I got enough old cell phones in a box <clears throat> in a closet somewhere, I'm sure, that I could plug it in and have another nice camera working. So I've just got paint thinner and uh, some bright red, so I can do my D... W. We're going to call this one finished. So if you see this one and you enjoy it, oh, leave us a comment. I'd love to see any paintings you're working on. If this one isn't your favorite, I don't really need to know that. That's okay, but you're welcome to share that comment if you absolutely must. Some people, it seems like some of their spiritual gifting is criticism. Well, I'd love to see their perfection paintings and just enjoy every moment. So... I am Dan. It has been a joy once again to paint for you this morning. Let me see if I can get you a decent full shot of that before we sign off. And we're going to, we don't really have any rollout credits. Excuse me, Jesse, buddy. Sweet doggy laying with at my feet and down by the feet of the easel now. There we go. So there's our finished painting. My version of kind of a Cypress Creek, Cypress Swamp. Oh, and you could spend hours doing this. Details in the back, all kinds of things, more cypress trees, different roots. Well, it is a fun one. I hope you try it. I hope you're having a great day. Till we see you again. I love you. See ya.